This week on the early edition of Awesome Cast, we talk about putting your Raspberry Pi in a cardboard box you can talk to, releasing the reins of Tumblr porn on your iPhone, and stream your VR to your headset no matter where you are in your house with some apps by Chilla. That and more Awesome Cast. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky. It's time to get awesome. It is the awesome cast, the awesomest of casts. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter here in Mayhem Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. Let me talk tech with you guys. On this Sunday special edition, I am I am traveling to Michigan. Uh, hold on, which way is it? Is it this way or is it, Katie? Is it this way? Oh, come on, you 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 you're closer to Michiganers than I am. Is it? Am I holding it the right way? This mm-hmm. way. This, left hand. Left hand. Okay, so I'm going right here. Uh, on Tuesday, so I can't do the show. So we're gonna do some stuff for Wrestling Mayhem show that night. I think we're gonna get a remote in uh, for that. But but I'll be here, and and I don't. I'll, but I'll be on my way to here, so I'll actually be over here sometime that day. Uh, whenever we we do the show, if the audio, I'm sorry. Just hold up your hand and imagine that I pointed to the center of my palm. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> so uh, we're doing it today. It's getting early in your feed, so thank you so much, everybody. A couple of people dropping in already. Uh, to see what's going on with me. Hey, in in studio on the couch is Katie Dudas. She is the uh, marketing uh, director over at the Scare House. Did I get that right? Yeah. Marketing and something. I keep and forgetting. Sales. This. And sales. That's it. That's it. You sell things. Yeah. I'm not good at it. <laughs> it's all about selling zombies and and I almost said fake vomit, but that's somewhere else. Uh, blood and 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 intestines. I've seen your, I've seen your I've seen your dining room during during haunt season. Yes. Uh, so, um, <laughs> how are you doing today? Good. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. I'm a, awesome. A fine Sunday. Yes. I also delicious. delicious. I, have, I have a delicious cookie today. I'm doing a throwback to a certain cafe. Yep. I thought you were talking about the zombies, like that's what you wear around the zombies. No. It's actually a fun thing, the word. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> also, hey, you heard the voice, uh, producer Missy is in here with us, help keeping Hi. things straight. Hello! I'm running the ones and zeros. The as ones, usual. yes, uh, keeping, make sure everything is cool in the chat room and throwing things at me when it's not. Do you still have the kabuki stick? Yes, you do. Uh, also with us in, from Studio C is John Chichilla at Big Bank International Esquire Gadget Guru over there. I met some of your people yesterday in Uber. So You met some of my people? Yeah, there was, there was somebody people. from Big Bank uh, uh, North Carolina that was in <laughs> said, oh, uh, that I had a ch- nice chat with, and I told him about the sh- you doing the show. So, did we take him to the airport, or where were you guys going? Oh, no, they were in for the was marathon. Was, uh, they're 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 in for the marathon. They're going to the theater over in the South Side Works and and uh, going back to their hotel downtown. So, uh, so, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, this is your awesome cast. We uh, and you can check everything out at awesomecast.com. I should put the notes in front of me because I'm all discombobulated doing this on a Sunday. Uh, you can join us here when we're not changing around the schedule every Tuesday at live.awesomecast.net or just hit up our Facebook live post over on facebook.com slash awesome cast you can drop a slide on our uh, twitter at awesome cast awesome cast at sorgatron media.com subscribe and rate us please over on itunes stitcher spreaker iheart radio and video versions on the youtube and the facebook page and of course thanks to our friends at the 405 media and rivers edge pgh.com for streaming the show weekly sometimes daily and uh helping us and getting us in front of uh, some more ears and 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 everything uh, through their outlets. We uh, really appreciate their support. And also, thank you to our friends Matt Weller at the Coffee Club le- uh, level, uh, the $5 a month level, uh, Matt underscore Weller, uh, who, who 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 incites Chilla to buy new bags after... <laughs> did you buy the bag? I did not. Not yet. It's, 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 a, it's a bit pricey, but I'm definitely thinking about it. I, I love it. It is a two-way street, because we're here making recommendations, you know, especially if you get your hands on a lot of, a lot of gadgets and uh, bags, 
uh, and, and everything. But, but we're getting it, we're getting it both ways. And and thank you so much to everybody that's uh, participating in that. Also, thanks to uh, Michael Fedor, Michael Fid- Mike Fedor show on Twitter at the fan of the show level. You guys can support the show uh, through Patreon as well. We'd love to get to the point where Patreon is the the way that we support the show uh, more than the ads and everything. So check us out at patreon.com slash awesome cast where this week you will get this week's edition of what did sword break this time mm-hmm. um it's uh something that made me cry in a eaton park and <laughs> recently so uh yeah yeah sometimes you can see you know the the uh weeping tears of sorgatron in his coffee at the eaton park on panksville if uh if you're so fortunate so uh find out what that is it's something that i talked about recently that he just purchased and made me very, very sad because it was a very useful item. Also, an update on a lap- laptop gate as I visited the Apple store yesterday. Um, and I didn't know what else to call it. Gate seems seems right, right? It's, it's, the, it's the MacBook conspiracy. <laughs> Actually, it might be from what we were talking about. Uh, so let's get into our awesome things of the week. Um, I'm not going to start with Katie's because it says technically not an awesome thing. But it's important to know about. An anti- okay, uh, we'll start with your PSA here. My PSA. Okay, so I'm sure everybody saw the Google phishing, Google Docs phishing scheme that went around and hit literally everybody I knew. Every office, every... I saw posts. I know it, it went through ScareHouse. We, um, none of us clicked on it, thankfully, but it did go through, you know, we did get the emails. A very educated office. Yeah, it was, it was as soon as we saw it, Scott emailed everybody. He's like, don't touch, don't touch, bad touch. Um, so why this is kind of important is usually with a phishing scheme, they send you a link. They say, hey, we need you to update your password. Enter your username and password. And you go, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. If you're not good at, if, if you, may, you may accidentally do that, that's wrong. What this one does, it used OAuth, which is, uh, which you'll see in a lot of third party apps. Uh, like if you go on Facebook and you're like, I'm going to add farming game and you give it permission to post as you I have access to your contacts. It's almost the exact same thing, but with Google Docs. So you got the email. If you, if you were lucky enough to not click on it, what happened was if you did click on it, you got the email, you clicked on the link and it said, I give this Google Docs, which was technically an app permission to access your phone, your contacts, uh, send and receive emails on your behalf, like all the big permissions. And if you weren't paying attention, you clicked yes. And suddenly this, they have access to everything you have. And that's where they sent out the next level of the uh, emails. And they just continued on and continued on. So this is like big level, like this is a big deal because you may be seeing more of this now because when it works so well, obviously, so more people are going to try to do this. And then, because it, it just kind of preys off of our, well, we're giving everything permission anyways. Why not give this permission that we're kind of already doing? So this OAuth is a, is a big deal now. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, we didn't kind of, I mean, we not, didn't give it a second thought before. Not that it wasn't a big deal before, but I love this article that I, I gave you. And it just kind of like why this is such a big deal. Because, you know, you, you blow off phishing schemes and you're like, oh, someone just gave away their username and password. It's like, no, this is sneaky. And people are getting fooled. And in the article in question is a uh, uh, Google Docs phishing scam, a game changer from uh, Erica Chikowski over at uh, darkreading.com. So, yeah, oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, it, it, you know, realizing uh, as one of the other podcasts that, that, that I was listening to saying, th- if you have two-factor authentication, which is everybody's like, turn on two-factor, do this, do this. This circumvents that mm-hmm. because it's you're, you're, you're already logged into a computer, uh, a, a phone, whatever. And uh, you you click that and and it, and it pulls over. So so kind of just a little more awareness, you know. Don't don't just click allow on everything, um, you know. And, and just just kind of know what that is. Um, and and now a lot of that caution that you would get with a word document or a PDF in your email now applies to uh, these these Google Docs. So please be aware of that. Make sure if you weren't expecting anything, double check with the person you think it's coming from and say, hey, did you send me a thing? Um, so that's, that's definitely, definitely advisable. And, and, it, the amazing thing was, is, well, one of the most amazing things was the, it was, you it went to you and then the other email address was hhhhhhhhhhhhmelinator.com. Mm-hmm. It was, it was BCC'd or CC'd on the email. Right. So I, I, you would have to imagine the person that created this didn't think this was going to actually work. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because that was really not a very sneaky thing. And it's, um, and, and also one of the, one of the good things about this, because mm-hmm. it was technically, for this to work, it needs to be on Google's platform, mm-hmm. right? So when Google realized there was something going on, they were able to 
basically rescind all authorization of this thing. Mm -hmm. So so there was a blanket fix to this versus if you have Word documents, that's a very one instance kind of thing and you can't really roll that back. So I think that's that's one of the positives when you look at something like this. But it's also now that this worked and now we're saying, OK, there's so much, you know, authorization, uh, you know, app kind of stuff going on out there. Yeah, there's going to be more of this. So keep an eye out. Be aware. Right. So, Chilla, what is your awesome thing of the week? So my awesome thing is a actually an app and it's called a notable I'm guessing is the correct way to spell it. Um, <clears throat> it is free for iOS. It has there's an iPhone and, a, and an iPad um, combined version out there. It's free to try out. And the cool thing that I thought was is every tool in it is free. Um, some of them do come at a cost, but they're all free to see what they're like. Mm -hmm. um, if you you can buy some of the individual tools, I think for 99 cents. So if you want to very specific tools, or you can buy kind of like the the whole pack for 10 bucks. Um, I do a lot of screen capturing and a lot of annotation type work, um, and and I'm for kind of that best effect. A lot of times I'm taking the picture, marking it up a little bit on my iPad or iPhone, then shipping it back to my computer and doing a bunch of additional touch up, mainly because of having to highlight something or I want to blur content um, or even kind of like do a vignette or kind of like where, where I focus in on a certain section, enlarge it and then kind of mask out the rest of it and, and, and kind of darken it um this tool has all of those tools all in one um i thought it was a, a, first of all the blur tool is awesome um it's perfect for if you're trying to show screenshots and maybe your mailbox and you only want to show one message in the mailbox and all the other ones you want to blur out the subject lines and the, and the previews of the message um that's where this type of tool comes in handy um also if you're trying to put focus on maybe you took a picture or something um and you kind of want to draw focus to a, a certain section or you're, you took a screenshot of an app and you want to call out something. It, to me, this is perfect. There's, there's other tools out there like Sketch, which Evernote, I don't, I think hasn't updated in at least a year because um, they've kind of said they're, they're not carrying that application forward, even though a lot of people are relying on it. Um, we, we do talk and it will, we'll, we will be talking in some um, up, upcoming uh, tips where, where you can annotate right within iOS on any photo. But this really kind of expands that tool set, and it definitely makes it worthwhile. Now, who knows, maybe maybe Apple will start to add all of these tools into their annotation tool set, and, and they'll kind of Sherlock this app. But to me, this is they, they did a great job, and there's a, there's a recent update that added a lot to this. So is free uh, and, and, and notable by uh, Ling Wang out there? Uh, so yeah, that's cool. I, I, I love it. I love the idea of this. Like it feels like a very kind of, um, spark Adobe spark kind of idea. Um, and I'm liking these ideas where, where these kind of these micro micro, I need to do a thing with a photo, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Photoshop mix even is really good with this, with a lot of their tools. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm glad to see this is all kind of like breaking out to this. So you need an app that does X versus a Photoshop that can do everything. Right. Uh, right. so yeah, really, really cool tool. So and a notable Go check that out on the uh, iTunes store. So I'm downloading it right now. So that could that could come in handy for sure. So uh, my awesome thing of the week is, you know, you guys, I, I mentioned, I guess that was the awesome cast gold we were talking, uh, you know, Raspberry Pi, you know, we, we, we actually used it last week for uh, the awesome cast gaming beta that we were doing. Uh, please check that out at awesomecast.com if you want to check out what, what, what happened there. Um, so, so. Um, again, Magpie, and I guess this is a kit partially that came with Magpie, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but there is a kit that Google has a release for Raspberry Pi. And this is apparently the first Google hobbyist project, which is weird because I feel like cardboard might have been a little bit more of a hobbyist project. Um, but maybe kind of it. Maybe, maybe Chili, you can, you can kind of interpret that uh, a little better than I. But uh, Google is going to turn your Raspberry Pi into a dirt cheap home competitor. Uh, so again, everything's made out of cardboard, as Google likes to do, right? This kind of like fold out kind of device kind of thing. Um, you're going to add a little bit extra hardware of a microphone and a speaker to it. And what you end up with is this cardboard box with ports sticking out of the side of it and a big red button. 
uh, that you press the button and ask your yo yo mm -hmm, Google, uh, you know, what's the weather and things like that. Uh, so you have basically a Google Home and very British people talking um, that that that's good to go. And of course, you can pry add on some other um, aspects to artificial intelligence. The initiative is called Artificial Intelligence Yourself, A-I-Y, which is obviously a takeoff of a do-it-yourself DIY kind of stuff. Uh, Chill, have you been looking at this? Are you, are you as the person that's already talking to half of his house here, um, in, you know, whether as a speaker or not, uh, you know, it, 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 does this seem like something you, you would play with or something? It, it is something I would play with, and, and I have been looking. I wasn't looking at this exact version, but I've been looking at where you can actually use a Raspberry Pi to run some additional software over the top that allows you to talk to devices that aren't um, HomeKit aware. So I have like a Wemo switch, and I have... Or something else in the house and it's escaping me what it is right now but i can't use them with home kit this would kind of it would be something that's a kind of an additional app that runs on top of raspberry pi, uh, raspberry pi that lets you talk to that I, i'm starting to think we're getting to the point where you're going to be able to take a raspberry pi and make the raspberry pi speak to google home a lot because i've seen ones that you do this with alexa as well um so you could you could actually use this type of device and have all the modules running that would then kind of unify all the different platforms, whereas it seems like those companies right now don't – all the vendors that make a light switch want, want their light switch to work across all the platforms, but the platforms don't want you the, themselves talking to each other. And I feel like this is the perfect way to bridge that because I don't, I don't see a lot of – there's not a lot of hardware out there like a switch or whatnot that speaks across all the platforms. Yeah, absolutely. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Well, and that's that's what you know. I look at a lot of the the, the Raspberry Pi is like you know this kind of patchwork stuff you can do, right? Like we kind mm -hmm. of have a, a very rudimentary uh, you know security camera system here because of the Raspberry Pi that we set up. So, um, but no, I, I I like the idea of this. And again, it's it's a also a you know, kind of cheaper way to kind of play around with and, and have kind of a Google Home kind of experience too, right? So, but, and, and see what you could do with it before you started integrating. Um, and and I, I think it's cool. I I just love like electronics and cardboard as a thing <laughs> in general, because then you can dress it up, right? I mean, you can, you can like make it look like the companion cube from Portal, you know, and maybe, I don't know, is there is there a Google Home package that makes it sound like GLaDOS or something? So, you know. Uh, you know, Google Home keeps giving you the wrong answers. Uh, you know, like like the GPS that they had out uh, uh, at one point. So, but no, go check that out. It is um, uh, this is an article in, in Gadget that we have linked over here. Uh, but you can find out more at. There's got to be a direct website here. Nope, nope. Oh yeah, go over to uh, Raspberry Pi dot org under Magpie, and there's going to be more information. Just look up artificial intelligence yourself, AI, why, and there's uh, more info. So, uh, all right, with that, uh, well, give a shout out to our friends. Uh, of course, it's not Tuesday, so we did not partake uh, in our in our usual pizza ness, but uh, thanks to our friends at Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza uh, that, uh, you know, gets us, you know, all together here on Tuesdays, typically, uh, when we, uh, you know, uh, it's right in the middle of dinner time, so it's hard to get people in studio, and uh, it, it really kind of helps that out. Uh, check them out. There uh, there was actually somebody, I, I picked up somebody on Mount Washington when I was ride sharing yesterday, and I was like, yeah, I'm over in Beachview, and they're like, oh, Slice on Broadway. I'm like, dude, they're a sponsor. They're great. Uh, so thank you so much to those guys. Uh, go check it out. Support your local pizza joint if you're not in the greater Pittsburgh area. These guys, of course, here in Beachview, check them out right along the tracks on Broadway, down on Main Street in Carnegie, PA, and, of course, in PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. You can hang out there when there's giant rain delays like there were Friday. Great place, great pizza. Uh, thank you to them. Uh, SliceOnBroadway.com. A really awesome cast sent you. All right, we have a few things. Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh we had a we had somebody out here um oh steven out there uh, i had no i i have no clue what a raspberry pi is with computers but now i want to go to eden park for the berry of the month in may <laughs> so i will need to do some research so um 
Okay, so we have a couple of things. I want to make sure I credit everybody that that, that put their articles in here. Um, for awesome cast, thank you so much, everybody. That that you know, a lot of these stories that we get in here are are sent to us. Um, you know, shared on the Awesome Cast Facebook group, uh, where you guys are, are sharing and commenting on a lot of things, uh, as well as on Twitter. Uh, people are hitting us up over there as well. So we, <laughs> wait, I didn't see this. Alexa Bliss is setting off everyone's Amazon Echo. Uh, pro pro wrestler Alexa Bliss apparently. Yes, wait, yes. wait, hold on. Let me get you up here. So, so this, what happened here? This this is something interesting that um, Brandon, fan of the show Brandon, actually shared over mm-hmm. that. Apparently, when they're talking Alexa, it's setting off because her name's Alexa because Bliss. Because her name is Alexa Bliss. Oh and no! And the funny, the best, the best part about the thread over in the awesome cast group on Facebook is Uncle Crappy posted that Sorg's worlds com- collide because you have your tech and your wrestling with this article. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. And it just makes everything perfect. But it is such, you know, what do you do when you're watching television and there's a character named Alexa, right? Yeah. It's going to set everybody off. Absolutely. And I can imagine the searches. I mean, bliss. Like, oh no! Oh, yeah. oh no! Yeah, this might be more. This is see, we pulled it back in. There's the point. <laughs> so uh, maybe one of the results is is because it, it, it does kind of sound like a porn name, really. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, uh, um, Chilla, Chilla, you got it. You got an Alexa, of course. Um, I I need you to watch. Uh, I need you to watch some some promos for me with your TV on. What? Sure, I can try that out. All right, I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send you some links, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens there. Okay. Yeah, I can throw that up in on on the the TV and and check it out. As long as, as, long as you know, I don't uh, uh, you know get some suspicion from your from your wife. Why are you watching this Alexa Bliss character <laughs> on your television? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, it, I'm research. Saying, I'm just test, I'm, I'm test. I'm researching. Research. Research. Everything boils down to research. Anything questionable with your significant other can just be explained with research. So. Uh, it's, uh, we are not going to talk. Oh, uh, the. What else do we have here? Uh, Missy, what else uh, kind of popped up here from what was submitted? Oh, uh, if this, then that. Uh, I, he, uh, Doug actually, he, 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 he uh, tagged me in this and said that he thought of me. And I do do a lot of driving. And I, I do try to use Siri as much as possible. And we all know how limited that can be uh, with the things you can do with it. Uh, but there's an article here out of Lifehacker that he shared. That was um, how to uh, safely keep track of ideas while driving with uh, if this and that I F T T T, which I think you can go to I F T T T dot com. And this is, I mean, and if nothing else, this is a good awareness to remind people of how awesome I F T T T is. So, uh, so they they have these recipes, and and these are things where like things like when my automatic, which is going to come up with story here later. Um, tracks my mileage of my car and it automatically now tags that on my Google calendar when I completed a trip or or um, dumps all of that into a Google Doc so we can kind of pull it up when we're doing taxes and figure out our mileage and everything for, for business things. Um, in this case, uh, one user points to I, an IFTTT uh, applet that can help you keep track of thoughts and ideas of your car, Siri to Trello. Um, so, and I'm kind of curious how this works as well, because I, you know, Siri doesn't really interact with a lot of apps, right, Chilla? So, so it's up to the app vendor. They can write the stuff in there. Like I think WhatsApp and like, I know Skype for business. I can tell her to call someone on Skype for business Okay. and it'll actually, it'll actually launch that app, look up that person. So it would be up to someone like Trello, um, or or whoever the app maker was to to allow her to then communicate with with the app. Mm-hmm. So of course, and this is this is one of those things where you could of course use the the default take note taking app is one thing that I do sometimes, um, and that comes with a Google Assistant or Siri, and, and the applet that they have is is specifically a. Um, well, I'm looking at the Google Assistant one that will um, you you. I know on iOS you can use reminders and you can link reminders to your Google account. Yes. So the so so you can kind of turn around to it. Uh so and here there's one that's a Siri to Trello. You can use Siri to uh add a reminder that will put a card on 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 our Trello board list. Um but I'm kind of curious. I'm gonna turn this on 
Yeah, we're doing it live. We're doing it live. Um, let's see how this works. Um, so I sign in and do, 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 do. Uh, so I, I, I'm kind of curious, how do you determine um, what board it goes to? Or do you just have this like collective things from Siri board, right? And you'll get permission. Oh, hey, this is that thing we were talking about where I just add permission to everything without looking. But uh, but generally with if this and that, you're 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 pretty okay. Read all your boards and teams. Great. Here, this is the stuff you're supposed to read that I gloss by uh, when you're when you're doing things like this. So, um, but that's awesome. Yeah. So if you're in Trello or anything like that, uh, and, and in general, just look for. I always I always used to have a reminder um, weekly to to go to tr- go to if this then that and just be like okay. What are things, what are recipes people have done that could, that could help my workflow, right? That I can kind of add in. And we have a couple of things that, that still go with that actually. Um, oh, and you do get a really nice interface here where, uh, for Siri with Trello and you can say, create a card, what board is it? And then there's a bunch of our, you know, business things going on. Uh, so like, you know, Baha SAE podcast that we work with. So I can, um, so I think you will have to set this as a specific board. So maybe you have a reminders board, and then you can go in later and, and take those and throw them on other boards on Trello. Uh, so uh, Trello is kind of a project manager um, um, site software, for those that don't know as well. So uh, thanks, Doug Durda. Uh, Yin's Love Barbecue. We'll give him a shout out for that uh, for, for that as well. So This is one of those things, too, that, that it'll be interesting. If, if this gets a lot of traction, will Trello then put Siri integration in there? Because... Just just looking up real quick, um, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, WeChat, Slack, Square Cash, Monzo, Pinterest, Look Live, The Roll, Pikazoo, Pikazo, they all have built-in Siri integration. Mm-hmm. So, so it'll be interesting. Will this get them to update their app that then it just supports this out of the box? Because that is one of the things that, that I really like about If This Then That with those recipes – a lot of people look at how many other people are using it. And a lot of the devs look at a lot of how many people are using certain things. And then they decide to build it into their app with a little more full fledged polish. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So use that, uh, you know, and uh, hopefully it gets kind of more integrated. So, all right. First, a shout out to our friend, uncle crappy Mike pound over at the, uh, uh Pittsburgh post gazette. He of course does the wonderful beer me blog and series over there. And he's got an update for uh beer week sixth year. Uh, so go over, read our friend over there, uh, Mike pound and, uh, find out what's going on with beer week. And I, I kept seeing tweets of it all week. It sounds like it was a pretty, uh, crazy, uh, uh event. So, uh, go check that out. Wait a minute. Is this, they're using discuss for comments. Wait, yes. Hey. You didn't pay attention to the doc because the biggest thing that he mentioned in that was it includes his wrap up of Pittsburgh Craft Beer Week with a cameo by our very own Chachi. Oh. And he says, speaking of worlds colliding, some of the beer folks at the event knew him because of Chachi plays. Nice. Ooh. So you see, you missed that disconnect and it's I right did. there in the doc. Sorry. I did miss it in the disconnect. Also, my flash player is not playing. So I think I was missing where he would have been. So um, awesome. So go check that out. And also uh, our friend Chris Whitlatch, uh, sent us the first augmented reality uav game drone pre ar this looks like a lot of fun and a lot of danger on one <laughs> all in one one uh go uh so so it's it's uh let me get this up here so it's a, a drone it's 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 a drone game and they mix it with um like in, in an arena experience. So it's really kind of real life drones video game style. That's awesome. And you're seeing you're seeing a lot of the uh, elements and everything, you know, kind of like when you got your Pokemon hanging out in the park, right? And uh that's awesome. Drone pre AR. Uh so check it out. That's that's another reason to crash your drones, I guess. <laughs> so, a little bit. Uh so thanks. All right. Um Katie, uh, what story you want to share here? Porn. Of course. <laughs> what else would we do? What else would we talk about? I was so excited. I just found this one. It's the bottom of the dock. It's the last story. Um, it's easier to find porn on Tumblr um, on your phone, iPhone now. So um, iPhone. And there's always been like like porn stuff 
on Tumblr. Like, this has always yes. been a thing, and it's always been a concern, mm-hmm. especially when they got bought by Yahoo a few years ago, Correct. right? So, so yes, yeah, so <laughs> so you can now find your porn on Tumblr on your iPhone. Uh, iPhone iOS was big. Uh, you know, Steve Jobs was all like, uh, "Yeah, if you want porn, you can go to the Androids." And um, that's not true anymore. So um, it, it's kind of cool because at the bottom of the, if you go into the settings for Tumblr, there's an option, Tumblr settings, safe search. So if you turn off the safe search, then anything goes. Oh. Yeah. So it, it's kind of, it's also very interesting because Tumblr's rated 17 and over in, and it's in the app store. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, something kind of Apple was kind of against in the beginning, but now it's cool. In, yeah, in the past, they would just not allow mm-hmm. things like Playboy was an issue, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they, they or, or, you know, and it got to the questions like you're allowing, allowing browsers that I can go to, you know, you you porn or something, you know, and that's not, you know, anything that would allow you to access content, whether it be user or otherwise, they had labeled and just kicked out of the store. And it's it's good to see that they're they've kind of brought that around. So because it just didn't make sense mm-hmm. to be you know the people that uh uh police that i guess right yes awesome so so have you turned it on yet uh not yet but it's interesting (laughs) because now because we're all mobile now right and that's the thing is is that's one of their top searches but you couldn't actually really search it on your phone Mm -hmm. until now so we removed the safe search now anything goes awesome great chilla (laughs) what do you what do you want to bring up Go with the cross-platform streamable VR video player. Oh, all the words. <clears throat> all the words. Okay, what's going all on here? Three up from the one you just picked. Got it. Um, there's, a, there's a new app called Skybox, and it's available for um, Daydream and Gear VR to start, and it's going to be coming to a couple other platforms. It's a pretty nice from what I've seen, and I, I'm actually in the process of loading it on my, my Gear VR. Um, the, the cool thing about it is it gives a really nice layout to all your video. It can play and it's supposed to be able to auto detect what format the VR video is in. Um, it can do um, standard 2D video as well. So it supports a m- multiple formats. But what I really liked about this one is if you've ever tried to throw a bunch of VR videos on your SD card, mm-hmm. um, you usually have to put them in an odd directory or you're chewing up a ton of space on your device itself so you can easily find the video to play it. Um, This actually has a desktop client. Today they have uh, a Windows PC client um, for pretty much anything running uh, Windows 64-bit, and they're going to have a Mac OS client coming soon. So you can run this almost like a Plex server, um, but it's the Skybox server, and the interface allows you to quickly navigate to the to where you're streaming from on your on your desktop um, and grab and stream the videos which i i really like this this option not just for um vr video but to be able to kind of watch and stream video to to any of my devices around the house so i'm super stoked for this and, and i'm really excited to be able to use it just primarily because of the space saving that you could do Absolutely. I, I like that idea of it being a plug service. So so this is something that you're going to have to do like in-house. But again, who's I guess yeah. who's really traveling with their VR headset, right? Yeah. Um, so don't, I, don't try with your VR headset. On. Don't try with it. And, and it does work. <laughs> um, so not just like an Oculus Rift, like uh, all different levels. Um, they do have a listing here. Um, so like I said, Samsung Gear VR. So that one that all you guys just got your new Samsungs. Uh, Daydream Google Cardboard. So it's really easy to access and get at this uh oculus and vive of course so uh, that's good it, especially on those phone based ones you like you were saying like i can't really load a ton of videos very easily on an iphone I, that i forgot was connected here whoops um so uh to be able to pop that up uh should be good awesome oh you gave me a, a typing loud on my keyboard uh notice thank you producer missy so i'll go check it's a uh, skybox skybox.xyz so yeah, I was, I, I've never heard of that 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 domain, but okay. All righty, all right. Well, they, they got everything these days. Um, okay, so uh, from there, hey, was on the kind of video sort of side of things, uh, shout out that the uh, Hulu Live TV beta has launched. Uh, it's forty dollars for fifty plus channels of DVR, which I guess is comparable to the 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 thirty five dollars ish uh, that we've had before. The interface looks interesting. Uh, first of all, it kind of has this 
sort of a, a little bit like that YouTube live-ish or YouTube TV uh, kind of look to it. Um, uh, I've noticed this interface because I was playing with the Fox app on Apple TV because I actually got rid of Hulu because uh, I was looking at just looking at like what we were watching and realizing like, you know, with a, you know, we do have access to 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 a cable login and realizing how much we were overlapping. And yeah, we were paying for no commercials, but do we really need to at this point? Because so much is available now. We actually watched like most of Legion before realizing it was even on Hulu through the uh, FX app, which was like, what are you doing? Um, so I like this kind of interface thing that looks like they're they're doing a bit here. Also interesting, if you download the Fox app, like you, have, it, it gives you, it shows you all the Fox channels basically too, uh, and just a really interesting kind of video background look look to things. Uh, it's going to have, of course, you know, a lot of the regular ones like ESPN, Fox Sports, FX, uh, USA, Vice, Land, CNA, CNN, Fox News, and I believe that was said that they are going to offer a sports free version. So if you don't want to pay that upcharge to get your ESPN and everything as you really don't care about it, uh, you're not going to get that. Uh, so I, I like that there's that option and then kind of that freedom of choice. So we're in, we're running this interesting era where it's just going to be um, tons of, you know, tons of options, you know, that we didn't have in our cable providers. Well, I, I really like the idea of the sports free because I'm it's I'm hoping that if you go sports free, there's some kind of discount because I'm pretty sure those sports channels are what's what's the the heavy cost to a lot of the providers. So hopefully, if they can strip out the sports and knock off five or ten dollars, that really differentiates the, from from themselves from the rest of the platforms. I'm sure the other platforms will follow suit, but. It's a it's a really cool way to hopefully get that price point down. I, I, what I would like to see is when you start to subscribe to these online only type TV, I'd like to see them doing better relationships with your Fox and your your other channels to then get you access, get you a cable type login. Um, with a lot of those those streaming services, because if you're paying technically paying for Fox via something like hulu then why shouldn't you be able to use the fox streaming app anyway yeah absolutely so and even just this joining those ideas of you know you know the stars or something i'd love to catch up on ash and the evil dead and realize i can just tack that on you know it just everything's Uh -uh. so disjointed and, and, and again you just have a lot of that choice and it's really good to see um that happening and again you can kind of watch tv when wherever you want not to try to paraphrase and steal another podcast phrase, uh, but uh, so there's that. Uh, Katie, what do you what do, what else do you want to touch on here? Uh, something on Facebook where you can now react to Facebook comments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were talking about this on on uh, Slack or messages the other day. Yeah, I just I just noticed it and I was like, ah, poop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> something else. Um, I haven't really seen it change in like as far as like analytics wise. I'm kind of, cause I'm curious if that's going to be and just another thing we can look at mm-hmm. uh, when you have a page on um, a business page on Facebook. But yes, you can now like love sad happy angry on people's comments which is it, it just i don't and just another way to add to the algorithm <laughs> yeah i guess so yeah. yeah i just but also kind of surfaces things you know you are, are the most reacted things you know more than just the reactions at the top of the post mm-hmm. but also like the post that it surfaces as these are the most popular are they a lot of angries are they a lot of hearts you know yeah. so i think that may give you a little bit more of a temperature yeah, because you know, as we're seeing here, like you see, like you know, the number twenty nine and the faces, and you don't really know until you hover them. Is it a ton of angry? Is it one angry? Mm-hmm. Right, and then if you see a bunch of posts, you see angry, 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 hard, hard, hard. You know, that can be a little different as well. Because um, even in like when we're doing the Facebook Live, I'm noticing a lot more of the comments are comments they're selecting that are appearing mm-hmm. as opposed to all the comments, mm-hmm. which is kind of a pain because you might miss something in the stream. But if it's getting the reactions, they're putting that up higher than the actual. Uh, the other, the rest of the comments. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I was a huge fan of it because like, especially when somebody posts, you know, Hey, you know, this, this close relative or friend of mine passed, it's, I, I don't like it appropriate to use the thumbs up for yeah. comments. Yeah. So it's nice that you now have some options with that regard. And like even comments on comments on comments, uh, sometimes it's not appropriate to, to thumbs up it, but you want to, show a reaction in some capacity or you want to acknowledge that hey 
I saw your comment and I, I like that it's going to give some option for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, it, now, now is this, this is an issue where, uh, Katie, are you, are you finding that you're getting a little bit of, maybe this has always been an issue, kind of informational overload as you're looking at those, those reactions and seeing what's happening. Yeah. Uh, Cause you can see things and you'll see, I, I try to do this if I can. And I would suggest this to anybody else who's in marketing and trying to get certain reactions or certain appear in, in more often in the um, algorithm is asking your audience to not like things. Oh, I, I sometimes I'll insert an emoji. It's starting out in the, a, a, like a smiley or a ha ha to try to get more ha ha reactions. Mm -hmm. And then that way you kind of get more that way and you'll get more things coming across and you'll appear more in the algorithm. But it's, I just, I don't, it's just another thing to think about yeah, <laughs> with, yeah. with the algorithm for me and, and trying to figure out, like, what are people reacting to? And it's hard with comments because there might be something that's just totally inappropriate. <laughs> but I mean, maybe it'll flag it more. Maybe I'll see it quicker mm -hmm. since everybody's like angry about it or happy about it or laughing about it. Let's say it, it, it get a little more temperature of the room with it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think mean, it's good to see. I mean, well, and, and Facebook's, aren't they hiring like a ridiculous amount of people to, to moderate? Facebook Live and some of the other things. So I wonder if this is a way, maybe, to be able to add to your point earlier about adding to the algorithm. It's it's a way to surface content they need to look at faster. Mm. That's a good call. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's a little more to it. Just another another level of it. Uh, Chilla, what else do you want to touch on here? Um, so here's a question for you guys: Do you guys miss having a physical keyboard on your your phone? On my phone itself, well, I, I, yes. I, I, I never had. Um, so you never had like a BlackBerry or anything no, like that. No, no, no. Uh, Missy, or a slider phone. Missy, you had a slider phone. So, and you, you, I think you had some reservations about going to iPhone at first. To be honest, I do miss having an actual keyboard. Um, and it was a fuller keyboard because it was one. Yeah, because I had I had the AT and T. It was the tilt, so I had yeah, a full the tilt and one of the ones that before that was the same form. Yeah, so I had the full keyboard. It wasn't like a BlackBerry truncated keyboard type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, right now, anybody who texts with me gets the message where it's I'm writing something, and then there's a dot space capital E. Because I hit the space bar, I hit the space bar again accidentally trying to hit like an M or an N or something. Yeah. And it makes that extra space. So it automatically does the the period because I did two spaces and then I get the capital E. So it's usually when I'm trying to type the word B or me because that the, the B and the M are next to the space bar. And I hate, hate, hate when that <laughs> happens. So just. Go ahead, so, so this is an so yeah. So did you bring up? Did you see the article in there? Yeah, I got it up. Okay, cool. The um, Samsung and they they released one for the the S seven as well. I, I never saw a lot of these around, but I'm I'm seeing more articles pop up. Samsung's released a physical keyboard overlay that you can actually attach to the bottom of your device. Uh, the article that I pulled was talking about for the S eight plus, but there's one for the S eight as well. Like I said, there's 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 these devices for the S7. Um, it allows you to kind of clip on to the bottom of the device where the keyboard would normally pop up. Um, a, a, a keyboard over top of that that's physical. <clears throat> I thought it was interesting, too, that the, the keyboard, because they got rid of the physical the physical buttons on, on the device, there's, there's the physical Android-type buttons at the bottom of the keyboard because obviously those are going to be covered up. Um, and then they do have some, like a, a miniature keypad where you can hold down an alt key and use the different keys. It's a cool concept. I'm just, I'm, I'm interested to see, will this catch on? It, now, maybe it will. I mean, a lot of people have bought back into the BlackBerry type device because of the physical keyboard and the fact that it runs Android. They can get their favorite apps and have the physical keyboard. I'm just not sure. I'd want to pack this with me all the time. I don't know. Yeah, it, it just you, you have that little bit of accessory fatigue at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm oh. looking at it. And I, I liked the fact that, like I said, the, the Tilt had a built-in pull-out keyboard. You know, so I didn't have to have something I was carrying 
separately. Well, this this snaps onto the back. So when you're not using it, it snaps onto the back of the device. My question would be, how easily would it come off? So, like, other other concern that I would have would be a, a phone case. Because we all put mm-hmm. our phones in cases these days. And would that well, integrate it, it, well with... The- so that it, it, it so that it's the it's a single piece. So there's a it actually adds the back phone case, and then this actually clips to the back of the case, and it uses the case to clip onto the front too. So if if you have your if you have your phone, and for those of you on the, on not watching the video, I'm sorry. If you had your phone, you'd have a case on the back like this. Mm-hmm. It would co- it would clip onto that case in the front, and when you weren't using it, you actually just turn the phone over, and it clips onto the back. So, would you have to have a specific case for it? I think you do have a. Sp- it comes with a specific case. Okay, it, it's kind of like if you want the the iPhone with the wallet attached. That's the case that's, you're getting. Yes, yeah, I think okay. right. Like it's a very. It, it, you're basically buying a specialized case, and and you're you're kind of determined by by that that situation. So. Um, no, I think I think some business users that that, that miss their BlackBerry days uh, will go for this, but this is going to be a very specialized thing because I think I feel that the majority of people have probably adapted to the the um, touchscreen world that we've lived in um, for a while. But you know, some people may go back, and and, and cool. I see I see more and more people using dictation oh, too, yeah. which is oh, surprising yeah. to me. And skips all that stuff, so that's good. All right. Well, on that note. Missy, what events are coming off this week, this extended week since we did this early? I didn't put events in the updated doc. It, well, there's events in here from before. Anything to highlight? Yeah, I'm 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 getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting like there. uh Well, the the big thing that's on my head you know, in the in the front of my brain at this point is the Millville Music Festival because mm-hmm. that's coming up next Saturday. And that's kind of been front and center for everything that, that I've been dealing with. So what are you doing? Over? That was a blank page. It didn't load yet. There it is. Oh, okay. There it is. Uh, so, yes. Um, so if you're interested in some local music, this is actually kind of cool. I did a newsletter blast this morning to our uh, volunteers for the event that I'm helping with the volunteers. And it's, I think it's 118 bands set to play in the borough of Millvale. We have 16 stages and it's a little over 12 hours worth of music because uh, the first stage, I think, starts off at 11, 11, 30 ish. And we go until midnight at some of the other stages. So if you do the math on it, that is a lot of music a lot truncated there. into so much that Chilla drops something. Yes. <laughs> and it's truncated into a very small right. window of time. Uh as far as non-tech events are concerned, I'm sorry, more tech events, less music events are concerned. Uh, we have the Alternative Digital Marketing Make Google Work For You seminar with the Pittsburgh Tech Council on the 17th. The Create Festival is June 1st, and that's at the August Wilson Center, again with the uh, Pittsburgh Tech Council. The Hustle Her Way Summit is coming up on June 9th, and that is over at Alpha Lab with Kashira Moffitt. Pittsburgh Tech Fest is June 10th at LaRoche College. There is a DIY video making, tell your story, Ooh. and plus MYO, which is a make your own, I'm assuming, motion graphics on June 15th. And we also have a couple of evening, or I'm sorry, not evening with PodCamp, but we have a, as I go to my actual physical, you there see my, my calendar over here. All kinds of technology. Because I don't here. have it added in for tech yet. Uh, we have the boot camp series with the Beachview Library coming up on the 17th. And Sorg is going to be teaching us podcasting basics. Yeah. Oh, for, we're going back to the intro of the podcasting next week. Those are fun. Uh, on the 17th. On that's the, in a couple of weeks. Or in, two, in a couple of weeks. Good, because I'm not here next week. Yes. Uh, it works out well. Yes. Uh, so I should be in attendance. Um, no, yeah. And we always have a really good reaction. And we get into... Um, more nuts and bolts with that talk um, um, than, than than anything else. Uh, so yeah, it's an introduction. Like it is a little bit of like you should consider this kind of microphone and this and this before you start. You know, more than content. And we've had that kind of content discussion as well. So go check that out uh, and join us in the Beachview Library here in 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 uh, the South Hills. And uh, looking forward to it. And of course, if you have an event that you'd like to have listed, I I try to go through periodically and like hit up some of the the calendars of events in Pittsburgh that have tech centric events to pull for our information. 
But if you have a specific event you'd like to have us mention or have listed, uh, hit us up at events at sorgatronmedia.com and we can go ahead and include that information. Absolutely. And of course, also you can tag us on Twitter and Facebook for it and we'll try to get them added in as well. Awesome. All right. Uh, thank you, Chilla, at Chilla on the Twitter. Chilla yes, Tech. John Chilla. Oh, sorry. ChillaTech.net. <laughs> John Chill on the Facebook. Check out his awesome tips. Some new ones will be coming out soon. They're in the can. Just need edited. We got to see if I can get a computer that can handle chroma key so we can edit those. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, you know, but uh, but hey, that, that MacBook Air, it's it's holding up pretty well. I'm getting some edits done with it. So so I appreciate the donation to the cause there, Chilla. Uh, 2011, no 2011 MacBook Air is handling editing okay. The biggest thing is having that trackpad. I, I, I can't survive without the trackpad. Because that's how I, I live see, in Final Cut. Did you see my message? Uh, yes, I did see your message, actually. So. Yeah, if you want to stop by and pick one up. Might have to swing by soon. So, um, It's it's this one. <laughs> it literally just has like spare, awesome, old tech that is really useful to the rest of us. It's great. It, it, it's, not the new, it's not the new white one. That is fine. The, that is not an yeah. issue. Uh, <laughs> Katie Dudas with the Scare House, the Scare House podcast, part of the great Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Hi. Hey. Kate Edders on Twitter, Kate Marie PGH on Instagram, I don't know, all over the place. Check out the Scare House Live you guys have been doing. Yes. Yeah, Friday at noon. Every Friday at noon. No stress. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. You do this. You know, what's what's uh no, no problem doing that, yeah, right? Yeah, I guess not, but it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just uh going live, going live. Um, and of course check out everything at sorgatronmedia.com. So many tech shows, uh, wrestling and all kinds of fun stuff in around Pittsburgh and, and beyond. Uh so we got a pretty cool network uh coming together with all of our friends, including Bold Bold Pittsburgh, uh, uh panel riot. Of course, the Scare House, Awesome Cast, Wrestling Mayhem show, and everything else popping out. A little bit of Sawtooth Willie, too. A little bit of a hobo in a closet. Yeah, you know. We'll everybody just, has a hobo in a closet. Everybody has a hobo in a closet. Could be a metaphor. Could be not a metaphor. You don't know. Uh, thank you, everybody. Support everything. Subscribe over at awesomecast.com and keep an eye out on our Facebook page of Facebook Live. Just like when we do weird, let's, hey, let's do a show today because of scheduling uh, and popping in and let us know and getting the notification when that pops up. Um, for that uh, so over at the Awesome Cast Facebook page so thank you so much everybody for joining us there you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com